Today we're ready to talk about the divergence theorem. All right, so to start off, we'll introduce the idea. And so remember that the divergence of a vector field measures the flow or expansion or compression of a vector field. So you can think of this as a total measure of the fluid of a fluid flowing in or out of a region in a vector field or a gas um, being expanding or compressing. If exactly as much fluid is entering, as it's leaving, your divergence will be zero. If more, more fluid is leaving than is entering, you have an expanding field, we'll have positive divergence. If more fluid is entering than leaving, we call that compressing and we have a negative divergence. We've seen divergence before. Divergence is calculated as the dot product of our del operator with our field. And again, uh, be pertinent to note here, but we've used these component functions before at M and N P as usual, we'll refer to the x, y, and z component functions respectively of our vector field. So Stokes theorem related line integrals to surface integrals. And the divergence theorem does something moderately similar. It takes surface intervals and relates them to triple integrals. So here's the statement of the divergence theorem. The criteria is that you need f to be a vector field with continuous partials. Uh, our surface, S, needs to be piecewise smooth, it has to be oriented, and it has to be closed. Then the flux of F across our surface S in the direction of the surface's outward pointing normal, with the normal given by N as usual, is the triple integral of the field's divergence over the region D enclosed by our surface. So this time we're going to take the interior of the surface. Stokes' theorem took the line integral of a, uh, of a curve and related it to a double integral over uh, the interior of the surface, the surface integral over the interior of the surface rather. And here to the divergence theorem takes a surface integral and relates it to a triple integral over the interior of that surface. So we're going to just start off with an example, just recklessly plowing forward. So for the vector field f is given by 4x in the x component function, 5z in the y component function, and 6y in the z component function. Uh, and our surface is given by the cylinder x squared plus y squared equals 1 that's been capped at the z equals 0 and z equals 8 planes. And we're asked to find the surface integral of this uh, vector field. We probably could do this surface integral. Surface integrals are, are piecewise additive, so we could do the uh, set it up over the three smooth surfaces of the sort of the exterior of our cylinder and then the cap uh, with each of those z planes. But let's see if the divergence theorem would be easier because that seems like a whole lot of work. So first things first, we know the divergence theorem involves the divergence, so we'll calculate the divergence of our vector field. Remember divergence is the Nabla operator dotted with our vector field. So we're going to take the partial with respect to x and uh, apply that to the x component function partial and then add that to the partial with respect to y being applied to the y component function and add that to partial with respect to z being applied to the z component function. And when you do that, you get a very nice expression of four. This looks promising. So we've got everything set up, all the criteria is met. We're ready to apply this thing. We don't even have to set up the surface integral or worry about that. We can say, hey, divergence theorem applies. So instead of doing the surface integral, I'm gonna do the significantly easier triple integral. So here I'm using D again as the interior that is uh, bounded by our surface, the interior of our surface. Note here that that's a pretty clean integral, actually. Like uh, you could pop that four outside and you have the volume of a cylinder. So yeah, so where are we at? You might be tempted to go ahead and parameterize our cylinder and its interior and go ahead and do the, the triple integral. Every one of us is capable of doing that at this point, and that's great. But remember that if you have a triple integral over a region D in space and you're integrating with respect to the volume, then that just gives you the volume of D. And we know that the volume of a cylinder is something we can just calculate directly without having to do the integral. And so we know that the volume of our cylinder has um, 
since it's of height eight and has area of the base is pi r squared and it's a unit circle as its base, so it's eight pi. With this in mind, it takes our integral and turns it into a volume calculation. Pop the four out in front of the triple integral, then sure enough, this whole expression is equal to that, which is that, so we end up with 32 pi. Now that, I think most of us will agree, was significantly easier than doing three surface integrals. But there's a nice caution here. Um, it makes it seem like integrals that arise from the divergence theorem are always easy, and that's definitely not the case. We just I wanted to start off with a nice example that worked out pretty pretty slick. All right, so let's work another example. Uh, this time our vector field is uh, component functions for x are seven x plus y, y component is z, and the z component is three z minus x. This time our surface is given by the paraboloid z is equal to eighty one minus x squared minus y squared and the x y plane, and we're asked to find the surface integral of it. So again, we could do this surface integral most likely, but let's try the divergence theorem. Well, before we do that, let's kind of talk about a general method to attack the divergence theorem. First, we know it's going to involve the divergence. Um, so we'll start by just computing the divergence. Then we're going to set up the triple integral over the interior of the surface. And this is just setting up a triple integral, which we've done a whole lot of. So we just need to figure out what that surface bounds, what is the interior of that surface, the region that it bounds, and set up our triple, and triple integral over that. And as you could probably guess, with triple integrals, we're maybe going to have to use different coordinate systems that we've seen before. Um, and then last thing, but not least is we've avoided setting up the surface integral and now we can directly do the divergence integral. But you know what, let's get that extra integral in there, which is necessary because it's definitely a triple, not a double integral. Sorry for the typo. Okay. That fixed it nicer. Okay. Uh, so Returning to what I've titled another example, our second example here, same setup. Uh, well, let's start, let's just apply this method. Let's calculate the divergence. Well, taking the uh, partial with respect to x, applying it to the x component function, seven x plus y gives you the derivative, partial derivative of seven, uh, applying the partial derivative of y to the y component. So the partial derivative of z with respect to y is zero. And last but not least, the partial derivative of our z component function, 3z minus x there, a with respect to x is going to be just 3. Add together 7 and 3, and you've got the divergence of this vector field as 10. Now it's time to set up our triple integral over the interior of our surface. So it's the interior of that parabola, parala paraboloid thing. So cylindrical coordinates are, seem like a reasonable thing to try here. Um, and so if we just set z is equal to 0, we see that we get, okay, and the base of that paraboloid, so to speak, is x squared plus y squared equals to uh, 81 or 9 squared. So we see that we've got it in a nice format where r is going to vary between 0 and 9. And we can rewrite, rewrite z as z is equal to 81 minus r squared. Lastly, let theta vary between 0 and 2 pi. And uh, and uh, we've done it. We've got our, we've got our theta bounds, we've got our r bounds, and we've got our z bounds. Now one comment here, if we pop back to the prior slide, we see the divergence is 10, just the constant 10. Then why is there r here? Well, this is, it's, it's, uh, takes a surface integral, which uh, we've already, when we're writing parameterizations, we take care of the differential relationships as part of that process. However, here, we don't have that set up. We haven't yet dealt with the, um, the differential relationships. And if you look back to the, set, the setup and the method, the second step is to do a standard triple integral. And so when we're doing a standard triple integral, we're using the volume differential. And if we choose to work with cylindrical coordinates as we did, we have to remember that factor of R that comes along to relate the differentials to the volume differential. So that's why we have to remember our R because we chose to work in cylindrical coordinates. So we go ahead and evaluate this out, which again, I kind of leave as an exercise, but you get yourself a nice big answer there. 
and we've done it. We calculated the surface integral of the vector field over the surface as asked, but we used the divergence theorem and it made it easier. And that's it. That it concludes our discussion of the divergence theorem. I lied, that doesn't actually conclude it. There's one more comment I have to make, apologies. So why haven't we mentioned uh, the orientation of the surface in this case? Well, again, I've said it a couple of times that we don't actually have to set up the surface integral. We can just apply the divergence theorem and do the oftentimes easier triple integral. And as such, orientation of the surface doesn't come up. So as long as it's possible to orient our surface with an outward facing normal, in other words, as long as it's possible to take a and do a surface integral of this particular field, then we don't need to explicitly compute the normal vector or worry about that orientation when we're applying the divergence theorem. And now that brings our discussion to a close.